people in South Florida are emptying store shelves, filling grocery carts, and packing their cars with water. It's not good for you. It's not good for distress. You have to do it early, as early as you can. Monday, Hurricane Hunters flew through the storm for the first time as it gained strength in the Atlantic. We'll know more as the week progresses what kind of a threat it really poses to, uh, to Miami-Dade County. Carlos Jimenez, the mayor of flood-prone Miami-Dade County, is watching Hurricane Irma closely. Well, the storm surge is uh, really the thing that, that kills the most people, so that's what really we're worried about. Storm surge is when the sea level rises during intense storms, pushing water ashore, leading to flooding. A recent study found Florida has 2.7 million properties at risk, the most in the U.S. Miami Beach averages around four feet above sea level and fights flooding at high tide on a regular basis. Last month, heavy rain turned the city streets into rivers. The anti-flood pumps failed during a power outage. The city has ordered portable backup generators, but Mayor Philip Levine warned the pumps may not be enough. These pumps were designed for normal rain and, of course, sea level rise. They will be helpful in the event of a storm, but they're not designed for hurricanes. Irma now at Category 5, but for some perspective, it's been more than 100 years since two Category 4 hurricanes have made landfall in the U.S. in the same year. And with Harvey Fresh on everyone's minds, the concern here in Miami and throughout South Florida is that if Irma makes landfall, it could also be disastrous. Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, September 5th. Big news coming at you from Irma. You may have already heard it has been upgraded to a major Category 5 hurricane. Sustained winds right now, 180 miles per hour with gusts up to 220. The forecast track has been slightly shifted off to the north and northeast here, staying over open, very warm waters of the Bahamas as it puts its sights on the southern part of Florida. That kind of uncertainty, obviously, the model uh, margin of error does grow significantly up to five days out. So. Southern Florida is within that cone of uncertainty as we get towards Sunday morning. Very, very dangerous storm out there right now. Those winds unfathomable. What prompted the upgrade to a Category 5? Well, Hurricane Hunter aircraft have been flying in and out of this storm pretty much constantly within the past 24 hours. They're passing each other on the runways as they're coming in from one mission and taking off for the next. Well, this morning they did a run through and found uh, peak winds or sustained wind speeds of around 186 miles per hour. Big jump from the last time they were out there. This was found in the northeastern quadrant, and that prompted uh, the upgrade there. So that one, I want to tell you about the hurricane quadrants. Which ones are the worst? You cut it into four slices, quadrants, and you look at the northeastern side. is always going to be the strongest. Why? You have to factor in the storm momentum or the storm direction. So it's moving off to the north here. So you have to take into account the storm movement speed and add in the wind speed. So you're always going to get those higher wind gusts there in the front right or the northeast quadrant. On the other side of that, the front left, still significant storm surge there. And you go off to the back right, significant wind speed still found within that. The back left, if you're talking in terms of weakest when you're dealing with a hurricane, you're going to find the back left as finding the weakest winds there. So we're going to have to watch that very, very closely as we go through the next few days here and see where that northeastern quadrant influences some land masses. Now, I also want to dispel some rumors that maybe you've heard on social media. I know I've been asked a few times, Tim, when is Irma going to grow and become a Category 6? News to me, there's no such thing as a Category 6. The Saffir Simpson scale, which is what we use to gauge hurricane strength based on its wind speed as well as its minimal central pressure, only goes up to a Category 5. And that includes any storm that has sustained winds of 157 miles per hour or stronger, which is where Irma currently sits. It cannot grow in categorical size from there. This is the strongest of all hurricanes. The category is the most destructive and will flatten many buildings and completely flood the first or lower floors due to the storm surge with the increased wind speeds constantly. And then you got those higher gusts as well. Here's how it looks on infrared satellite imagery. This allows us to view the storm even at night when the sun is not lighting up the clouds to be picked up by visible satellite imagery. But then I want to flip it around and show you how it looks on our visible satellite imagery. I mean, this is a almost perfectly symmetrical storm here with a very defined eye. In fact, we get a close up view that eye itself nearly 30 miles wide. In fact, if you look closely, you can see the ocean surface. Typically, when you get a very well-defined eye on a very mature, very sound-structured storm, 
you see the ocean surface or the land surface right through. Very calm conditions within the eye, and there is a reason for that. The very strong winds that surround the eye, the eye wall, are stopped from coming into the center of the storm by a very simple process that you may have heard of, the Coriolis force. It's driven by the rotation of the earth, and that deflects all those winds off to the right. So they all rotate around the center here with the gustiest winds just outside where those clear conditions are. Also, the skies are clear because air that is forced into the Five storm, 175 mile per hour sustained winds. At its peak, Katrina was 175. We haven't seen a storm of this strength in 10 years since Felix in 2007. Millions of Americans are looking ahead to another potential disaster. Hurricane Irma was just upgraded to a category five storm. It now packs maximum sustained winds of 175 miles an hour. So wind speeds at 175 miles per hour, which is unbelievable. Gusts at 185, so a strong Category 5 hurricane as it approaches the Leeward Islands. That is an absolutely devastating and catastrophic hurricane for these islands. Uh, hurricane warnings have been issued, and hopefully their plans are in place because a Category 5, that is pretty impressive. As Floridians prepare for the storm, many areas in the Caribbean are getting ready for a direct hit. Here's a look at Irma from space. Emergency officials say the storm could bring up to 10 inches of rain and 23 foot waves. As you can see, this is the calm before the storm. As you mentioned, states of emergency, not only in Florida, but also here in Puerto Rico, where we were upgraded to hurricane warning just overnight. And that means today is all about preparation. The people who we've spoken to here on the ground have said, look, we're Caribbean people. We understand what it's like to have wind and rain, especially at this time of the year. But a Category 4 hurricane, that's a completely different beast. That's why the National Guard has already been activated. Schools are closed. More than 200 FEMA workers are already on the ground and almost 500 emergency centers have been set up all throughout the island. Meanwhile, back in Florida, people are gearing up. We're having food and supplies and water. They're stocking up because authorities there say they can't afford not to be prepared for Hurricane Irma. All 67 counties there are under a state of emergency, and some people are taking a wait-and-see approach, deciding whether or not they're going to evacuate based on how close this hurricane comes. Meanwhile, many there are preparing for an event that's already been described as catastrophic and as life-threatening and one that's barreling toward us as we speak. And the National Hurricane Center is saying we're going to have a Category 5 for a, maybe a day or two. So watching this, the northern Leeward Islands, you're in trouble right now, unfortunately. We are dealing with a very strong, potentially dangerous storm moving your way. Then we watch Puerto Rico, uh, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, Cuba, and there is the center of the storm. But I, I don't want people to pay attention to the center because there is the potential five days out that this moves south of that center or north of that center. But certainly right now, Florida Keys, South Florida, making your preparations now. Very warm water ahead of the storm. That's why the potential is there for it to maintain its Category 5 status for the next 24 to 48 hours. There's the computer models. Very good agreement until Friday. And then we start to see the trough that will potentially influence the storm coming from the north. And then we think making a right-hand turn. But again, we got to watch this because anything can happen five days out. I know Florida, you're in the crosshairs here. Gulf of Mexico, though, you need to be prepared. East Coast also needs to be prepared. One thing is for certain, Julie, yeah. this is a very dangerous storm that could potentially be deadly. So we need to make our preparations now.
Florida's governor declared a state of emergency ahead of a potential impact. The storm could strike islands in the eastern Caribbean tonight before heading toward Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Forecasters say Irma could turn north this weekend, heading for Florida or the Carolinas. Manuel Bohorkas is in Miami with the latest there. Manuel, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm standing in the Brickell neighborhood near downtown Miami. And during a storm last month, this area flooded after heavy rains. In fact, this is what it looked like here on August 1st. As Hurricane Irma may have its sights set on the U.S., people in Florida are preparing for the worst. It's really pretty dangerous outside, to be honest with you. Nobody should be out. Nobody. Well, I hope there aren't too many people in the path. You don't want to be in that path. That's a path you don't want to be in, and we tried to warn everybody. And for the most part, they've left, but that's a bad path to be in. This is a life-threatening situation. Take this deadly storm seriously. Overnight, the moment Florida had braced for. Irma hit land and the Sunshine State went dark. Thousands hunkered down in shelters and sports stadiums to ride it out. Animals were taken to a safe place. This was too much rain, too much water, even for the two-legged variety. There was a mandatory evacuation order in parts of Florida, but some decided to stay put. Our building here is built in 67. Uh, it's pre-stressed concrete slabs on uh, poured concrete walls, so we feel pretty confident. We've been through a lot of storms in that over the years. When Hurricane Wilma, we had the water come up to the second set of block. We're anticipating the same thing to happen. Boats were tied down and fingers were crossed. The authorities have been quite clear, though, that they say sure. it's a danger and, to live and, stay. And that's understandable, and that, that really is the truth for most, most locations. But at 13 and a half foot of elevation with another 10 feet on top of that, plus the fact that the building is so strong, that's our advantage. Key West was where Irma first made landfall. Even sturdy historic monuments like the Castillo de San Marcos in San Augustine couldn't escape Mother Nature. In Naples, further up the coast, water levels rose by two meters in just 90 minutes. Fort Myers was next in its path. Fog swirled around skyscrapers and roads were flooded. This is the situation right now. Around Breckle Bay, the water from the bay has started to go inside the buildings, the lobby of the buildings. But it's really pretty dangerous outside, to be honest with you. Nobody should be out. Nobody. In Tampa, as in much of Florida, the streets were deserted. Water was sucked out of the harbour by the storm, a misleading prelude for what was about to come. The authorities were worried about a storm surge. I've never seen nothing like this. <laughs> uh, I, I think we're pretty prepared for it. Our house is all boarded up and everything. Just about the wind mostly and trees coming down. We're up in, in uh, activation level C, so I'm not really worried about the water up there, but just the wind and trees. We were just a little curious to see what the water level was like and how things were down here. 
and get outside before we have to hunker down. Yeah. By the time it reached the city, the hurricane had lost some of its power, but none of its fearsome reputation. Irma made landfall on the southern shores of Florida early on Sunday evening. As it approached the state, it increased in strength and changed direction. Miami was spared a direct hit. The Florida Keys were hit hard, though, with winds of 130 miles per hour. As she progressed, she gradually downgraded to a Category 1 storm with winds of 75 miles per hour as it moves along Florida's west coast. By the morning, the centre of the storm was about 60 miles north of Tampa, moving north towards Georgia and weakening into a tropical storm. Before Florida, Cuba took a battering. It proved to be a cruel few hours for the island. Not only did Irma change track to smash into the northern coast, she also suddenly gained strength as well. 170 mile per hour winds and heavy rain caused havoc. And this is the British Virgin Islands. Virtually no home has been undamaged, infrastructure has been ripped apart. People of the British Virgin Islands, this is Governor Gus Jasper. I come to you with a heavy heart after experiencing and observing the extent of devastation caused by Hurricane Irma. After consultation with the Premier, I have declared a state of emergency for the territory. It's like a war zone. The houses have gone, it's flattened. People are just wandering around carrying whatever they've got in their hands. Uh, it's, it's truly horrendous. One eyewitness has described the BVI as ground zero. Another resident thinks it will take a year or more to rebuild. Power lines are down, water is down, there's debris everywhere. There's people walking around homeless, some dead, families are grieving. The hospital has also been badly damaged. A doctor on holiday in Spain has been in touch with colleagues there. There are still some of our, still some of my colleagues that are unaccounted for, um, that they've heard nothing from. We don't know if they survived. They're the kind of people that, that would have been straight there to help. More British aid has been flown out by the RAF today, medical equipment and heavy lifting gear. 120 prisoners on the island escaped during the hurricane, and so officers from the Metropolitan Police have also gone to the British Virgin Islands to help with law and order. The scale of the devastation is unprecedented. So, of course, people are experiencing great hardship, and our job right now is to make sure that we can alleviate that hardship through the response on the ground, getting food, water, hygiene, shelter to people that desperately need it. And we are doing that, but obviously the need is great, and we're constantly replenishing supplies. On the island of Saint Martin, Troops now patrol the streets of the territory. This was one of the worst hit. Two people were killed here and more than 40 injured. The island is jointly administered by the French and the Dutch. This footage was filmed by Marines from the Netherlands military. There are now 200 extra troops on the island helping to deliver aid and restore order amid reports of looting. A few hundred people have also been evacuated to Guadeloupe, including Johanna Cardona, who gave birth the day after the hurricane struck. I was in the house during the storm. It was horrible. The house fell apart. Now it's war in St. Martin for food, water. There's no electricity, no air, nothing. The Bahamas is counting its blessings. The storm hit, but it was a glancing blow, and it has merged largely unscathed. The holiday nation has been spared the ordeal that befell its Caribbean neighbours. They prayed for mercy and those prayers were answered. This is what it did to the Turks and Caicos Islands though. I was inside and the breeze stopped blowing. 
carry all the wolf, everything gone. I was inside, but I see two whiskey for me. Like about 10 o'clock, I got to run, and I fall down, all my hand bruise up, and I lost everything. That's the wolf head. That's the wolf, everything gone. Florida, of course, has been here before. At this hour, we're issuing a hurricane warning for the southeast coast of Florida, extending from Vero Beach southward through the Florida Keys. Hurricane Andrew devastated Miami County in 1992, killing more than 60 people and destroying 125,000 homes. On the left, this is what Andrew looked like 25 years ago. Irma is the storm on the right. It dwarfs it. This was the scene in Tampa as it woke up at the beginning of a new week. People are starting to return home cautiously. One of the first tasks will be to restore power. 5.7 million homes across Florida are without electricity. We are still, of course, worried about the storm surge and the heavy rain that will be associated with what is left of Irma. So that the next drop down from a category one would be to a um, tropical storm. And those are bad enough uh, than a tropical depression. And we're looking at it going into the mountainous areas of Georgia, uh, South Carolina, uh, Alabama and on into Tennessee, it'll be dropping about four or five inches of rain. And when you drop that kind of rain in a mountainous area, flash flooding, of course, is a problem. We are also forecasting winds upwards of 50 miles per hour. So you can expect some wind damage, uh, shingles coming off roofs, things like that. 